Hi everyone. Today's video is about a heart issue of tooth. Tooth has three heart issues: enamel, dentin, cementum, and a soft tissue that is pulp. Out of three heart issues, enamel has highest mineral content, and it is the hardest. But it is also brittle. That means it can fracture easily under the masticatory forces. So enamel needs a support, and that support is provided by a tissue which is present beneath it. That tissue is dentine. Yes, dentine is more flexible tissue, and it supports the enamel, which is a brittle tissue, and thus it helps in the preventing the fracture of enamel. Also, if we look at dentine and pulp, then they both are related. they are related embryologically histologically functionally as they both are derived from dental papilla cells if you remember from tooth development but still they are discussed separately why because dentine is a hard tissue whereas pulp is a soft tissue also if we look at bone which is present around the tooth there are some proteins in the bone which can also be seen in dentine so some of the properties of dentine are also similar to bone so this tissue dentine provides support to enamel is related to pulp also has some properties similar to bone don't you think we need to know more about the properties of dentine yes so this video is about the physical and chemical properties of dentine so before moving further quickly subscribe to dentozen as we keep making such informative videos for you now coming to physical properties of dentine first Now dentine is hard tissue because it contains mineral it is less than enamel but it has mineral then it is formed as dentinal tubules like this by odontoblast cells these pink cells which leave a process inside these dentinal tubules this pink process which goes inside the dentinal tubules so we can say that these dentinal tubules of dentine they do not have any cells of their own but they have the processes of these odontoblastic cells which are living cells so we can say that dentine is a living tissue because it contain the odontoblastic cell processes cells ki processes hoti hain inke andar and it is avascular blood vessels are present in pulp and not in dentine so avascular then it is divided into two parts the dentine in the crown is called coronal dentine coronal means crown dentine in the root is called radicular dentine radicular means root dentine now if you look at the diagram don't you think that dentine occupies the maximum part of the tooth of all the heart tissues yes so dentine forms the bulk of the tooth very very important point about dentine that it forms the bulk of tooth now coming to the color of dentine what do you think is the color it is light yellowish but with age it becomes darker you know dentine also gives color to our teeth you might have seen that in some places teeth are whiter whereas in other places it, they are yellow why because the places where enamel is thicker there we cannot see the color of underlying dentine so the teeth will be white and the places where enamel is thinner there we can actually see the color of underlying dentine which is yellow and that's why there the teeth color will be yellowish so in thinner enamel they will be yellowish teeth so we can say that dentine gives color to teeth this coming to the hardness of dentine so dentine has more mineral content than bone so it is its hardness is more than bone but it is less than enamel its weaker hardness number is 50 to 60 also its hardness varies between different types of teeth incisors canines premolars also it varies in the different parts of the tooth like in crown part the hardness can be different in the root part it can be different also if we divide the dentine into three parts like this is the central part of the dentine the one which is near the pulp that is second part and the one which is near the periphery that is third part so out of these three the one which is in the center that is central part of the dentine is has more hardness compared to the one which is near the pulp or the one which is near the periphery so it is the central part which has most of the which is hardest now if you talk about the permanent teeth in there the hardness of dentine is more as compared to the primary teeth now talking about the special property of dentine that is elasticity dentine is elastic tissue it is called viscoelastic as it is it provides flexibility and thus it helps the enamel it supports the enamel and prevents the fracture of enamel so dentino enamel junction has to be a strong junction so it is scallops scallops this junction is like this curves to provide firm attachment 
of enamel to dentin so that it can support the enamel so to know more about this junction you can tap on the i button above to to watch this video on dentino enamel junction now here at dentino enamel junction dentin is tightly attached to enamel now let's look at its other junction with the cementum on the root portion of the dentin on the outside of dentin we have cementum so this junction between dentin and cementum which is known as dentino cemental junction or cemento dentino junction is relatively flat and in this junction the fibers from both dentin and cementum gets mixed so collagen fibers mix here now let's talk about the permeability yes it is permeable it allows the substances to pass through it but this permeability decreases with age and this permeability is more near the pulp chamber of the tooth now if we talk about the radiographic appearance of dentin when we take a radiograph of a tooth then we can actually see all the structures either we see them as dark color ya dark dikhte hain or we see them as white so these dark are also known as black so which structures appear white which structures appear dark structures with more mineral content they appear white they are called radio opaque structures like enamel structures with less mineral content or no mineral content they appear dark or black and they are called radiolucent structures so if we look at enamel and dentin so enamel which is more mineralized will appear white and dentin is less mineralized so it will appear dark as compared to enamel so we can say dentin has lower mineral content than enamel so it appears radiolucent or darker than enamel but if we compare dentin to pulp which one is darker pulp is darker or black why because it has no mineral so we can say when compared to pulp it is radio opaque dentin is radio opaque or lighter as compared to pulp now talking about the chemical properties so dentin contains two important things inorganic and organic by weight 65% is inorganic material now this is very less as compared to enamel in enamel it is 96% and 35% is organic matter and water this can also be written as 70% inorganic 20% organic and 10% water that is by weight by volume it is 45% inorganic 33% organic and 22% water now let's know more about this inorganic and organic components first inorganic like most of the mineralized tissues in enamel cementum and bone dentin also has hydroxyapatite as its inorganic component which is present in the form of crystals and these crystals are made up of several thousand unit cells each unit cell has formula like this calcium hydroxyapatite and if you look at these crystals of dentin they are small plate shaped crystals that is important and their size their length is 60 to 70 nanometer with 20 to 35 nanometer and thickness 3 to 4 nanometer so these small plate shaped crystals found in dentin are much smaller than those found in the enamel how much smaller they are about 300 times smaller than the crystals of enamel now also in organic component other substances small amounts of phosphates carbonates and sulfates may be present now talking about the organic component though it is less than inorganic but it is very important it is also called organic matrix so it has collagen which makes the 90% of this component organic component also it has fractional inclusions of other proteins which are non collagenous so there are non collagenous proteins and lipids are also there then mucopolysaccharides enzymes and growth factors are there let's know a little bit about these components first is collagen collagen is the major matrix protein of dentin now this is in contrast to enamel in enamel we had enamel proteins here we have collagen so that is a major matrix protein of dentin and that too mainly type 1 collagen the dentin also has type 3 and traces of other types now what is the role of collagen collagen has a very important role here to bring the inorganic component that is mineral component how these collagen fibers these present as collagen fibrils like this they store mineral they take up mineral within them like this or on their periphery like this or in between two fibrils so what is their role they act as framework for mineral to get deposited 
so they have pores or holes like this as we can see here they have pores or holes within which mineral is lying so these collagen fibers found in dentine are one of the thickest fibers of all the dental tissues their thickness is about 15 to 200 nanometer what is their role they act as scaffold that is framework for mineral and 56 percent of the mineral is seen in the fibril holes and pores mineral is also seen inside the fibrils on the periphery of the fibrils and in between the type 1 collagen fibrils so that is the role of collagen now second is non-collagenous proteins they are less than collagenous but they are also very important now there is a long list of these proteins don't get scared one important one is dspp now this protein is secreted as one big protein and later it is divided into three proteins so this is formed as like this n terminal c terminal of the protein and then divided into three proteins so let's see the list so dspp dentin silo phosphoprotein is secreted as one protein then divided into three the part with the n terminal is called dentine siloprotein the part with the c terminal is called dentine phosphoprotein and the central part gives rise to what is known as dentine glycoprotein so out of these proteins dentine siloprotein and dentine phosphoprotein are the major non-collagenous proteins of dentine now, apart from that, we can have dentine matrix protein 1, bone-like proteins, bone siloproteins, osteoprotein, osteo means bone, osteocalcin, osteonectin, as we discussed that some proteins are seen in dentine which are similar to bone, then other proteins like glutamate proteins, phosphoglycoproteins and some serum proteins. Now, what is the role of these non-collagenous proteins? Collagen helps in the mineralization. Non-collagenous proteins regulate mineralization. That is, they will control mineralization where the mineral has to come or where it, come. it should not be coming. So, let's see. So, collagen fibrils like this, they hold the mineral like this. And these red non-collagenous proteins are present in between the collagen fibrils as you can see here. So, they can act as promoters of mineralization. So, this DPP can act as promoter of mineralization. It can bind to collagen fibrils like this and it can start the initiate the formation of hydrogen hydroxyapatite here so it can promote the mineralization then other proteins like dentine siloprotein may be present on the periphery of the forming dentine so there it will prevent the mineralization so it will prevent the blocking of these tubules so it inhibits the mineralization there. so these proteins regulate mineralization that is they can promote mineralization or they can inhibit mineralization so let's see these proteins are present between collagen fibrils or they may be present along the dentinal tubule periphery what is their role they regulate mineral deposition how by acting as inhibitors or promoters or stabilizers of mineralization so that is the important role of non-collagenous protein let's see mucopolysaccharides glycosamine glycans proteoglycans chondroitin sulfates decorin biglycan they act as ground substance in which all these proteins are lying then we have enzymes like matrix proteinases which helps in collagen processing processing of collagen as well as other enzymes which degrade the matrix then we have some growth factors so these growth factors, GF is growth factor, transforming, fibroblast, insulin, bone morphogenic proteins, epidermal growth factor, platelet derived, placenta growth factor, vascular endothelial growth factor and angiogenic growth factor. These growth factors are seen in dentine and they act as signaling molecules. So that is the chemical composition. Now let's come to the summary of dentine. So first physical properties, physical properties, it forms the bulk of the tooth as we have seen. Then it has light yellowish color it is harder than bone softer than enamel it is elastic very very important property and permeable now if we talk about the chemical properties these can be the different compositions by weight and by volume and the major inorganic component is hydroxyapatite forming small plate like crystals and organic component there are so many but the majority of it is 90 percent is collagen mainly type 1 then we have fractions or small quantities of non-collagenous proteins lipids mucopolysaccharides enzymes and growth factors so let's check now what have you learned so first question what is the bulk of tooth made up of color of dentine is then major matrix protein of dentine is then role of non-collagenous matrix proteins of dentine is regulation of what so i hope you got your answers do let me know your answer in the comment section below and keep watching keep learning and keep smiling 
good luck for your exams see you in the next video soon till then take care bye bye